Hey guys, Shannon Bryant here, Virtual and Blended Learning Coordinator in Keller ISD. And this is this short video is all about how I'm using comments in my class, my blended online class, to build community. Uh, it's a hard thing to do to build relationships, and yet we know it's so important. But who has time to stop, drop, and do team building right now? We're behind. So I'm just going to share with you a few tips of things that I've done to help build community while I am commenting on students' work in class. So one thing that's important to note is that I am using Nearpod, and the reason I use it, and you could be using anything where you're able to view students' work in real time. It's just what really works for me. So because I'm using this, I can see the work that they're doing on one big screen. And you're gonna see a video of me doing this. So while they're working, I provide commentary on what it is I'm seeing. And I try to, it, I do this more than anything else in class. There is not a lot of direct instruction, so that is key. I have a video on how to develop a lesson based only on questions that you might want to check out, and I've linked that down below in the comments. Okay, so one thing is uh, we have conversations about their progress in real time. That helps me so much. And then praising students, we know how effective that can be, but giving that specific praise also lets other kids know what I'm looking for in an answer. Because sometimes they don't get the right answer, but their thoughts and their ideas are wonderful, so I want to point those things out. I also talk about my favorite mistake that I see in class, because then I'm encouraging kids to have that growth mindset. Uh, and they have, are empowered to learn from each other because I can share their screens with each other so that they're learning from their peers' corrects and mistakes. Specific praise is the thing that has really been a, a huge deal for me, uh, praising kids when they have their cameras on, praising kids when maybe they have to write on their board simply a really good question. I am not sure why you did this, or I am not sure how they got this step. Saying those kinds of questions in class, and when I praise those, I see my students trying to then mimic that. That instead of saying, I don't know, or I'm not sure I don't understand, they're starting to give me some more specific questions. Now, when I get the I don't knows and the I don't understands, I don't correct those, but I don't praise them either. So praising those good things has really changed my uh, class culture to be more positive. Uh, finding those exemplar, really good student work in real time, and it's just as important as finding those misconceptions because a swing and a miss is a great thing if you learn why you miss. Sometimes students shut down when they get something wrong. So if I can point out a wrong problem where a kid has done something wrong and the good about it being wrong that we can all learn from, they're encouraged to try even when their confidence level might not be very high. Now, I throw in a research about brain development, how our brain grows when they make those mistakes. Uh, I throw in research about the importance of putting color and images and uh, communicating your ideas and how much that helps us mentally to retain information. That the understanding is more important than getting that good answer. And those are things that you're not having to stop to say but you're saying using student work. So it's really powerful. Plus, I like to throw in some fun facts every now and then. Occasionally, I'll say, can you throw a funny meme on there? And they will. And that just lightens the mood a little bit and makes kids enjoy the class. But you got to know how to keep them back in it to win it. Hey, let's take a look at this class. Like some guesses. Once you put your guesses in, you need to try solving for why to check. Alyssa added an image to her board from the coordinate plane so she could check it by graphing. You could also pull up the Desmos app. Plug in once you've solved for Y. Now I know because all of a sudden all my boards are filling up. I'll sit right there because the reason that my boards filled up is that I called home and I said, hey, I'm going to send you the Nearpod report for your kiddo because I want you to see that their board's been blank in class and they haven't been participating. It's another great uh, feature that you can use any tech tool, really, that you're using just about will record in live time what they're doing.
I know that I know that I know you can do this because I'm seeing your work and it's good work. Okay, somebody says I don't understand, so I'm going to explain the directions again, but in a different way. So this is your time to focus up here because I got over 50% of the people here understanding. So you might have got distracted when I was talking. I totally get that. We're taking the numbers one through nine, and you are trying to create two linear equations that are parallel. In other words, they have the same slope. You see, I could have gotten really mad about that kid and say, yeah, because you're over there playing Minecraft. But I realize I've got to keep him in it to win it. So when I find that mistake and I see, oh, he's telling me he doesn't understand. No, that's not the question that I want to hear. I want to hear what you don't understand. But I don't want to shut down this student who finally had the courage to write, I don't understand on this board. So I gave him an out and said, yeah, yeah, you might not have been paying attention. It happens to me sometimes. I want them to stay with it because of the positivity in it and not because of their fear of what I'm going to do. Hey, guys, what you, what you win them with, you win them too. I don't want kids to just be doing work because they're afraid. I want them to connect a positive emotion with it. I'm going to say this. If you have been, for the past two classes, logging on and doing nothing, like maybe you got distracted and you went and did something else because you thought you could do that in here, you're probably going to be very, very far behind. So I'm going to walk you through and help you get caught up because everybody's human, capable of errors, me, myself too. Try taking some of those numbers and plugging them in and then solve for y and graph it. I'm going to show you an example of one possible answer. There's more than just this answer, though. So I'm going to stop your work and share a board with you right now. Okay, I know it stopped you from working, and that's frustrating, but I want to show you because I have some of you that are not sure how to solve for why. And we have to know how to do this, guys. If you're a sophomore and you're taking chemistry, you're having to solve equations like this right now, but that not, might not be y equals. It might just have different variables in it. You've got to know how to do this. That's another big thing, showing kids the why. Maybe they don't have buy-in to do it in your class, but if you can show how this connects and helps them with another class or some other goal that they have, uh, they have more buy-in to learn it. We're going to watch just a little bit more. Okay, here we go. She put in a 1 and a 9 and a 3. I think that's a 9. It might be a 4. No, it's a 9. And then she went to solve for y. So when I look at this equation, I have an X over here and nine Y's, but I need to get Y by itself. So I am subtracting both sides by negative one X. I have to divide by the nine. See the nine's over here with the Y. That's the only thing with the Y. So nine is multiplying, so I divide both sides by nine. That's how she got this equation. She did it correctly, so you can trust this answer. Over here, now one thing I would say is, did it say you could, uh, yes, yeah, see you used a 1 and a 9 again, which was smart, but try using two other numbers. I really, though, wanted to show this mainly for an example of how to solve for y. She I hope you have found this useful, and I wish you the best of luck as you are enjoying the challenges in your online learning class. Hey, and if you like this video, subscribe, like it. Have a good one.